Hello everyone, welcome back to Unrest. Now I'm playing as Shyam. The council has called a meeting, so let's go and meet them and see what they want. Let's see if we can talk to JD Pierre first. Well, slap my head and burn out my eyes, the mercenary captain's actually wearing his sword today. I hope you've kept it sharp, because your men and mine are going to have a long day ahead of us if we want there to be a behemra tomorrow. Well, if the poisoning that I set into motion as Asha takes effect, I don't think you will have any men. Hmm. Well, might as well work together. I'll give you my plans if you give me yours. Work together. After all this is over, you find Ranvir and you talk to him. One to one. He'll decide if we can work together. My mistake. Coming to you like you were a real leader. Yeah, that's right. You speak your mind, old man. I'll see you in the slums. Mutter, mutter, mutter. Ah, there's Rhea. It's been a long time since I've seen you. I wonder how she's fared. Oh my god, they have servants blowing wind over them gently. Talk about pampered. VJ, Laxmi, Ranvir, Rhea. Okay, here's the council. Hello? Take my seat, okay. And the mercenary captain finally arrives. Scribe, take note. All members are in attendance. Huh? Sorry I'm late, dispatching the scouts. There's no other way to put this, so I'll just lay it out straight. The slums have erupted into riots, with no identifiable pretext. Ranvir's man, JD reports... Uh, Ranvir's man, JD reports that these riots have been sporadic that they began nearly simultaneously in different parts of the slums, and that they seem to have spread. Do we have a plan for containment? We do. Jadeep's men are equal to the task of keeping order within the slums. Meanwhile, you and your men will stand the defensive line and make sure the riots don't spread into the city proper. See, I'm kind of put in an interesting position here because I already played as Asha. And now I have the choice of how much do I want to play against... You know, you know, Do I want to kind of sabotage what Shy am and what the Counselor are trying to do for the sake of making sure that Asha's plan and her whole insurgency goes through? It's sort of like a situation where you get to play as... Like, both the serial killer and the detectives trying to catch them. So you have to wonder, like, what do you want to do, you know? Do you want the serial killer to, like, mess up and leave evidence in the hopes that the police will catch him catch him sooner? Or, or what? Like, what do you do? It's a very, very strange place to be in. Like, a strange spot. A strange position to be put in. Like, what the hell do I do? Okay, well, I don't trust J-Deep, so let's... Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to roleplay Shyam as... as him. I I'm just going to roleplay him as him, so I'm going to try to do the best job as him as possible. So I'm not going to try to sabotage or anything like that. I'm just going to play him as I think he probably would do himself. Alright. I want my men in the field giving oversight. Otherwise, this doesn't work. That isn't necessary. In addition to being needed on the defensive line, your men just don't know the slums very well. My people don't want a group of frightened soldiers stumbling down blind alleys, jumping at shadows, and skewering rowdy children. They want capable, experienced peacekeepers who care about the area and know the locals. Jadeep's men will be more than enough to keep peace. Hmm. 
Hold on. How sarcastic do I want to be? Do I want to criticize Ranvir? What kind of person am I? I can't look at my traits, can I? No. Hmm. Let's just be straight and to the point. Jadeep's men are slum gangers and red rags. I don't trust them. Yes, thank you, Shyam. I was afraid no one else would bother pointing out the obvious and terrifying conflict of interest. Are we going to let the man who wants to purge the slums of all Naga have free reign over a slum full of riots? That's right, he wants to steer the riots into getting rid of the Naga, right? W wasn't that the plan? Yeah, I, I don't want a potential... A potential... God, what the hell you, would you even call it? Would you call it ethnic cleansing? I uh, I don't know. I'd have to look up the word, but, like, I don't... <laughs> it, I don't want all the Naga here to be murdered. So, yeah. At the very least, I demand some sort of supervisory capacity. I think Ranvir can agree that a few men sent to monitor his defense of the slums is a reasonable concession. Ranvir? To monitor Jadeep's defense, you mean? Yes. If Shyam wishes to speak with me to arrange such a thing, I will be in my encampment. Excuse me. Now, I don't know if you people realize it, but this city could go either way tonight. The slums do not matter. No offense to Ranvir or Rhea, but they don't. They could burn down tonight, and Behemra would remain intact. But we only need one noble family to get killed by a mob of wandering thugs for our entire state to dissolve out of fear and, frankly, well-deserved contempt. We will only have one chance at this. I'm out of here. I can't stand listening to you people any longer. Cheyenne, if you want to talk city defense, feel free to stay. Everyone else has their tasks to accomplish. Oh, Laxmi stayed too. <laughs> Some dusty bookshelves. Oh, I'm sorry, this one's a dusty bookshelf. That's w That one is an ornamented bookshelf, even though they look exactly the same. Hmm. Strange. Whoa. Half-filled. Well-used. I like that there's actually separate descriptions for every single bookshelf. Half-filled. Well-used. Old. Ornamented. Dusty. <laughs> I love it. Alright, hold on. What's my... Like, what's my current mission? Check in with the Master Sergeant. Alright, well, let's talk city defense. Honestly, that could have gone better. We need to talk about what happened there. No, we don't. In fact, I refuse to. I'm very tired, and the city is rapidly approaching crisis. The two of us didn't sacrifice our health and our principles for the city just to watch a pack of beggars tear it apart. Did we? You know what you need to do. Go protect Behemra, because right now, nobody else can. Shyam, there's one actual reason I wanted to talk to you. The royal spy we turned assassin survived. Good. He didn't deserve you to betray him like that. He killed a king. Good enough reason to execute a person by any standard. The fact that I'm convinced uh, that I convinced him to do it shouldn't make a difference. And that was a joke, Shyam. A very tired, very strained joke. But I think we both know that we had to control the narrative of the king and queen's death very carefully. And you just can't do that if the actual assassin is still around. That's true. I don't know where he's been. But he's here in the city now. My spies have confirmed it. This is bad, Shyam. The people of the city have always wanted somebody to blame for problems that were unavoidable. And right now, 
There just might be the potential for a loyalist backlash. We do not want that. We are no good to Behemra if we're dead. Oh my god, I so, so, so want to work against the council right now. And help the insurgency. I want to leave the assassin alone. In the hopes that maybe they can be used to bolster the insurgency, but... Ah, no, I'm role-playing. I'm gonna keep role-playing. Okay. So, we'll kill him. VJ, just speak plain to me. I don't need everything justified. I do, but I take your point. If you come across the man, do what you have to. Remember, there's more than our lives at stake if things come to a coup. Behemoth can't survive another traumatic turnover of leadership. Honestly, if leadership can't be turned over... Then, should there even be a Behemra? Perhaps a be Behemra doesn't deserve to exist. If that makes any sense. Let's go see what Laxmi is up to over here, aside from staring at a pillar. This is not what I needed to deal with today. VJ should understand there are crises beyond the slums. Problem in the farmlands? This one woman demanded extra food in the middle of a famine. I said no. She proceeded to sow every kind of sedition and disrespect a really worked up peasant is capable of, to which I had only one appropriate response. Killing her prevented one riot, but it just might start another. I'm going back. A messenger might come by a little later on my behalf. I don't have time to wait for him. I believe he'll have some things to request of you. God, Laxmi, you are such a piece of shit. C can someone turn her into fertilizer and then use her to try to quell the famine? Jesus. Alright, what's up with these bookshelves? If there's a million books to read, I will read them. The bookshelves literally tower over you weighed down by hundreds of volumes. In the time since the regicide, VJ has moved in an impressive collection. Some titles catch your eye. I will take all of them! Can you a Are there actually, like, a bajillion books? Oh my god! <laughs> Holy crap! Okay, I'm gonna use the uh, shortcut keys, because it's gonna be faster. I'm going to take every single book, and I'm going to read every single one of them. Thankfully, they're usually tweet-lengthed, so shouldn't take too long. Wait, 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 there's something left? Whoa, 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 wait, hey, hey. there we go. No, there's no more books, but for some reason the little marker thing is still there. There we go, that one disappeared. Why are you still here, you little marker? Go away! Whoa, 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 whoa. There seems to be something hidden behind the other volumes. What? A sheaf of papers is pressed up against the back of the shelf. It appears to be a draft. Of pears and pug pugilism. This one looks... Bizarre. What the hell? Okay, I'm curious. I think it shows up under history, right? Yeah, okay. What? He donned the red mask again. Today he would fight for his fair. Today and every day until his stomach filled or the alleys emptied. What? The red mask. What? What is this about? I can't tell if that's, like, something I'm supposed to really pay attention to, or if it's some sort of an easter egg. Alright, um, let's read the others. Advanced grammar, this book is given to the Princess Asha, daughter of Behemra. Phonology of Behemra. The phonetic inventory of our language is shared with cultures of the north, such as the Naga Empire, but not people from the south and east. 
Auspicious signs. A creature of deceit and... A creature of deceit and creature of man's better nature walked hand in hand to prevent the final closing of all things. Hmm. Formulas, or formulas, of brewing. Medicines such as those created in other places cannot be easily found in Behemra, which has no form for philosophical collaboration. The love book. She ran to him with wild abandon, and as he saw her, he leapt from his horse and brought himself into her arms. Eh, still a better love story than Twilight. The Journeys of the Pale Man. What follows being an account of this man, who came from faraway places and treated our people as mere sidelines of his own natural legend. The world around us, the nature of all things, is known to priests to be more complex and yet far more natural and simple than many intuitively sense. You know, I don't really know why these books are here. I get why they're not full length, because that would be absurd and ridiculously long, but at the same time, they're so short that none of them really have any useful information, and almost none of them are long enough to even be interesting. There's really... I feel like there's no point in reading these. They dwell upon... The, nah, there's, nah, there's no point. They're not long enough to really have any interest in either practical... for, for either practical reasons of actually using the knowledge to help your decisions, nor are they long enough to even be interesting. I mean, they literally are, like, tweet-lengthed. It's like a freaking book in a tweet. You try to tell an entire story in a tweet, it probably won't be very good. Unless it's like, I walked to my fridge and I made a sandwich and I ate it. The end. Which actually, yeah, it's an okay story. It's got a beginning, a, a middle, and an end. Three act, like three, three act structure. Yeah. All right, Master Sergeant. Where? Who, who is the Master Sergeant? Are they out here? Oh. Well, I'm not sure if that's the Master Sergeant, but it is a Sergeant. Meeting go well, sir. <laughs> Went as well as my last fist fight with the Naga. We've got the borders covered. I've made a survey of who's left on the defensive line. Ten squads reported in with enough men to make seven squads. The rest are looting, or quit, or just didn't show up today. We also have scouts bringing reports on the slums, perimeter, and interior. Sooner or later, we'll have to pull back some of the men to hear your more explicit instructions, sir. Any idea what those will be? Yeah, I'm really worried about the slums. I mean, I am role-playing as this guy who's, uh... Obviously very experienced at war. But just because I'm experienced at war doesn't mean I don't want to... Protect people from getting... Or protect the Naga from getting brutally murdered for no good reason. I am going to try to protect them. But, let's talk to the scouts first. Alright, I better talk to the scouts first, get some idea of what I'm dealing with. As you say. Well, before you send out the men, the council paymaster and an advocate of Laxmi's both wanted to speak with you. They're around here somewhere. We also need to appoint a new sergeant, now that Mahit deserted. Meet me by the gates to the encampment when you're ready, and I'll assemble the men. Alright, where are these people? Here? That's an ear. What? That's a neck? Who, who's even talking? Is it the palace guard or the servant? What the f... No, it, it's you. That's a har What are you doing? No armor, it'll be just like shooting game. Counting off body places to shoot people or something? What the hell? Okay, that's a little bit creepy. What about you? You doing the same thing? Nope. 
Alright, well, they should be on the map, right? Refugees. Slain Naga. Whoa. There's a dead Naga? Veteran, veteran. Potential sergeants. Wait, the assassin that I'm supposed to run... You know, if I run into the assassin, I'm supposed to kill them. The assassin just shows up on my fucking map? What the hell? Way to take the mystery out of it. Jeez. It's like, yeah, if you happen to run into this assassin, take him out for me. And there's just a red dot on my map. Oh, what the hell happened? Loitering soldier. We went into one of the homes, just checking on the perimeter squats, and we saw this Naga bastard go for a weapon. You should have seen us, sir. We brought him down with the poles, just like in training. Yeah, wait a minute. Why would they pull a weapon? They <laughs> Why would they need a weapon? But more to the point, you kept the body. I assume there's a reason for that? Yes. Some of us were thinking, well, sir, we hear where you can sell the liver for a bit of cash to some of these rich folk. Oh god. Get rid of that body. Now. I hear you sold part of it, and I'll beat you myself, understand? But, sir, I was just... We have a Naga on the council. You want war with our empire? This is a good way to start one. Yes, sir. Jesus. Do not fucking do that. Don't look at me, sir. I didn't decide to let these people inside. Apparently somebody let them through the defensive lines once things started getting out of hand. Actually, yeah. That's a, actually kind of good. As it says here, useful, I need better information than what VJ's giving me. Yeah, let's get some information from the people who were actually there. That'll be the best quality information. Not passed through a filter that might want to... Tell me stuff that helps him. And not tell me the things that don't. Alright. Yeah, let's get information from them. Yes, sir. As you say, sir. I'll make sure they're brought some food from our supplies. Alright. Everything is happening according to plan. Just as I have foreseen it. The third eye shows me the reality of what has happened. Guides me, J. Paul, to hear you. Uh, to bury you the truth like a jar of sweet water. Okay, so what is this truth? The time for revolution has finally come. The true servants of Banca Mundi, overarching protector of all men, rise to snatch from the false and spiteful jaws of the liar, Ranvir, the gifts of peace and prosperity. Teeth bare, and wolves howl in their dens. Uh, what? The dog of the deceiver runs along the streets, nipping at the heels of all he encounters. But justice will be swift. Oh, yes. Soon he will taste the dark, cold milk of defeat. Okay. Yeah, you're not doing okay. Give him some food and some blankets and watch him carefully. You are a good man. There are not many good men. Not anymore. I know that Baka Mundi will protect you, even as she has protected me. Even as you have protected me now. I'm glad you let me in. It's terror out there. Absolute terror. Well, sorry to say, I need information. Alright, to find terror, I need as many details as you can manage. The riots started out of nowhere. It wasn't like anything special happened. As far as I can tell, they just... started. Ranvir's priests and Jadeep's men actually came out to try and stop them for a while. Then, when rioting spread and the mobs grew, 
Jadeep's boys started trying to get them even angrier, to give them a target. And did he succeed? Jadeep's men were everywhere, controlling everything. Then, I, I don't know, they seemed to vanish. I saw a few dead in the middle of an empty street without a wound on them. The street gangs figured out pretty quick that nobody was keeping peace, and while I was leaving, they were carving each other and everyone up. But I'd say the Naga got lucky. Oh, that's the poison! The poison worked, didn't it? Yes! I think that single-handedly may have stopped the, uh, the, the complete murder of the Naga in the slums. Yeah, a few dead in the middle of the street without a wound on them. Give this man 40 coins from our coffers. Shit, he deserves it. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Men, get this man 40 coins from our coffers. He's been more help than everyone else put together. I appreciate your help, sir. Today, I think. I finally realized I don't want to die. Oh my god. I don't know what's going on. I... I didn't see anything. I just saw the mobs forming and I ran here, and one of your men let me through. Please, I have a cousin here in the city. I was too proud to ask for help, but I know she'd let me into her home. I mean, she could be lying, and perhaps she could do something rather dangerous. If I just let her into the city. I want to say there'll, there would be time for that later. You know, just stay here and then we can reunite you later, but the problem is, you know, if the rioting comes to here, she could be killed. If she's just out here. Hmm. No, I'm sorry, it's too dangerous. No, Shyam's a... He's a trained military... Or a trained fighting veteran. He has lots of experience in... In battles and encounters. I'm playing him as someone who does care, but not someone who's just going to be the nicest person possible at all times. No. I can't let you loose, and I can't afford an escort. You stay here. Oh, well, I suppose things could be worse, couldn't they? Thanks for letting me stay. Okay, anyone I have not talked to... I think that's it for here. Okay, so I need to... Let's see, Lifespeed's Messenger and Payroll Master. Alright, so they're to the right. I've got the budgets VJ has prepared. He would have brought them to you personally, but he wanted me to double-check the coffers before bringing this to your attention. Are you ready to discuss your men's payment? Uh... Okay. Uh, that's right, we are mercenaries, right? We're being paid for this. So we're basically... contracted. Okay, I'm listening. Yes, well... 
there's no good way to say this. The budget is tight. Trade with the Naga Empire has suffered badly. And lately, nobles have been demanding funds to raise and maintain their own fighting men as defensive measures. We won't be able to pay your men their usual salary. We'll pay them enough to feed themselves and their families, but that's all I can promise. <laughs> I am a mercenary. Mercenaries don't work for free. I don't like this. That's not acceptable. My men are risking their lives for this city. Look at this from our perspective. If the nobles smell trouble, they'll overthrow the city a lot faster than a bunch of starving cripples ever could. We need to guarantee them protection. Now, if you can guarantee me that most of your men will be committed to the defensive line, I mean, that's what we're supposed to do anyway, is it not? Of course they are. But, I might have to send them into the slums. So I don't want to make that guarantee that they're going to stay on the defensive line. No, these are my men, not VJ's. I won't bow to his demands. We all have to make ugly decisions to save this city. This was one of VJ's. Now you can march your men pointlessly into the slums, leave the nobles to defend themselves with home-trained troops, and leave your men miserable and underfunded. Or you can cooperate and make the most efficient use of all of our resources. Which will it be? It's not me they'll blame if they don't get their full pay. I think we're done here. Tell your men to expect their salary, reduced, after tonight. Hopefully it will still give them something to look forward to, yes? Sure. Alright. What's your message? Counselor Shyam, my mistress Laxmi wanted me to speak with you. She requires your assistance on a few matters. If you're willing to cooperate with her, she'll ensure some extra considerations find their way to your men. Given the tight council budget, and the rising cost of food, could be a bit of a morale boost for them, couldn't it? <laughs> I love this option. Write this down. Too bad. Then sign it for me. <laughs> okay, but given that my men aren't going to be getting their full pay, having something else to give them, you know, a little bit of something. Wouldn't be bad, but the question is, what does she want me to do? I know she's a piece of shit, so it's probably something horrible. Okay, what does she want? Well, firstly, now that you've checked in with your scouts, she'd like a general update on how things are going in the slums. Put in your own words. Okay, so Laxmi needs this information for some sort of a purpose. I'm assuming she's making a decision or some sort of decisions. And whatever information I give her is going to possibly change what she does. So what is she considering? What kind of information? Like, what kind of decisions is she going to make that could hang on this information? I have no idea what she's planning. Do I want to tell her the truth? It seems harmless. Hmm. Alright. Let's tell the truth on this one. Death all over. That's... I really do think it's urgent, sir. She looked distressed. Hmm. Hmm. 
I really don't care about her, but I do care about the people that live under her rule. <laughs> Tell her to try more executions. Always does the trick. Hmm. I don't know if I want to give up my men. But then again, if Jadeep's men have died from poison, maybe I don't need that many men? Hmm. And if they riot back there at her, you know, at her farm, maybe they'll kill her or something, which would actually be a good thing. Hmm. No. Can't help her. Next. After having surveyed the preliminary defense plans, my mistress would also like to respectfully point out that there's a, there's a hole in the defensive line. You protect nearly all of the city from the slums, but they might, if they waited for a break in patrols, rush the main gate. Since that is where Mistress Laxmi brings in the farm's crops from, this is a problem. <laughs> she realizes these slum, slum dwellers are stupid, right? They're not going to wait for a break in patrols like some kind of master spy. Yeah, okay. The thing is, though, the rioting is not just led. The, the rioting is actually directed. Given that it's an insurgency. There's some weight behind it. And there's some planning. So, yeah, that's not good. Okay. Fair enough. Borrow one of these squads and put it down there. That's all, I believe. I wish you the best of luck. Alright. Do I have a new trait? Ah, proud. Nobody tells Shyam or his company what to do. VJ's boys say my men don't get paid what they're owed. Says he needs a promise. I'll put my boys on the defensive line or wages are half what they were. Okay. Now, what do I do? Um, I think I need to go to my troops. But what happens if I go this way? Because there's a bunch of people over here. My character keeps like flipping back and forth. Calm down, Shyam, it's okay. Alright, yeah, there's a bunch of people here, including the assassin. Hmm. So what would you do? Run away? Run away? Nah. I'd never run up in the first place. I think this guy's talking about how he wouldn't uh, die for a slummer. Yeah, who'd remember a guy who took one in the gut defending the slums? Hmm. Excuse me, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Oh, we were just talking, sir. It's nothing you need to... Captain, we don't really have to lay down our lives for useless starving street trash, do we? They want to kill each other. What's the point in getting ourselves cut open trying to stop them? I don't know. What's the point in paying a merc who can't take orders? Orders? But you haven't given me any. Useless is a soldier who refuses to fight because he might get hurt. Are you useless? 
N no sir, I'll fight, but... But what? Come on, out with it. Sir, I joined you because Behemoth's ripe for an invasion, and I thought for sure that one of these days, an army was going to come over the hill, and this would be my chance to defend it. I'm not soldier-born. The army wouldn't have me. But I wanted to be some good to the city, is all. I don't mind dying with a spear in my gut. But who wants to get killed by a spade to the skull defending scabby beggars from other scabby beggars? It's not about defending beggars. It's about keeping crazed beggars from crossing over and killing everyone else. Alright, sir. When you put it like that, I guess I can see it. Thank you, sir. Hmm. I'm keeping my eye on you. Gangers. Hmm, veteran up here. Can I talk to you? What are all these new kids whining about? This is my kind of campaign. No marching, no foraging, no carrying boxes of embers and skins of water over rocks and rivers and every other kind of nonsense. And best of all, the other side barely has weapons. And as for starving the enemy out, huh, we've already got a head start on that one. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit, he's right, but that is really, really, really disturbing. At least back then we knew it was someone else's people we'd be fighting. Well, the way I see it, there's not much any of us can do one way or the other. Only reason you're in charge is so you get all the blame when things go bad, right? Hmm, maybe. Yeah, you're probably right. Anyway, you want to know what I think about these sergeant candidates, right? Here goes. Sanjay is a real popular guy. Kind of reminds me of you, back when people still liked you. He's good leader material. Maybe a little too good. Wait, what do you mean? Bupendra's an idealist, you ask me. Either that's going to get killed by combat, or a lot of his men are going to be. As for Rajesh... Probably not how you pronounce it, but whatever. Rajesh. I haven't talked to him much. Doesn't talk to anyone else much, really. But he does a lot of thinking. No doubt about that. Anyway, your call. None of them are perfect, but hey. Neither was Mahit. And he managed to do all right. You do the best you can with what you've got, right? You get back to work, Shy. I'll stay here and get my gear together. All right, where are the candidates? Up here. Wait, are these them? Woo! The assassin is strung up. Okay. Don't make Bu Bupendra sergeant, sir. We'll all regret it. <laughs> okay. Sanjay is the only reason I survived my first week. He taught me everything. Wait, so where is the potential sergeants? Oh, oh, the, 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 duh, they're the people in blue. Alright, let's pick one. Just say the word, sir. I'm itching to get out there and give the men what they need. Okay, I've got some questions. Answer those before I make my decision. Sure thing, sir. Ask away. I really want to know their opinion about the slums. If you were a counselor, what would you do about the slums? Crack down. Frankly, sir, setting up a defensive line is just waiting for crazed rioters to come to us. And going in to handle individual engagements is risking our lives without solving anything. 
Slummers give us all nothing but agony. I stop treating them like real citizens and start treating them like what they are. Trespassers on Behemoth's soil. Okay. I don't think I want you. Okay. Let's go talk to someone else. So you're apparently the, the poet, the thinker, the one that people are saying they don't want. Sir, I'm exactly what this city needs, sir. I promise you. Make me your sergeant and I'll protect this city better than any man ever could. Okay, let's get some questions. What would you do about the slums? I'd institute strict food rations affecting the merchants, craftsmen, and nobility. I think we'll find we have a lot more food to go around if we divert Behemoth's product a little. This will keep the slums happy until the monsoon comes and we can figure out a more permanent solution. Hmm. I like your thinking. I like it a lot. Okay. What's your first duty as a soldier? Serve his people. Job is to keep Behemoth whole and healthy. Okay, I like it. What's the worst mistake you've ever made? When I was a teenager, I threw a rock at a Naga child. I don't even remember why. I remember the sound that he made, and how much blood there was, and I remember him wailing about his eye. His parent, I, I think it was his father, arrived a second later and looked right at me. I was so scared I couldn't move, and so were they. You see, this happened on a human street. I think about that kid nearly every day. The Naga couldn't get away with thrashing me the way I know he wanted to. Sometimes I wish I could go back and do it for him. I have a lot of respect for this person. Definitely someone who actually empathizes with the Naga, which is good. Okay. <laughs> if you could fix the city by killing me, would you? No, sir, I couldn't do that. I might have preferred it if you said yes. But I do value my life, so... There's really no wrong answer on that one, I suppose. Okay, why should I make you sergeant? I've been out on the defensive line many times, sir. I've heard the men talk. They're all very loyal. But as a whole, they lack empathy. They need a commanding officer to show them the right thing to do, whether they like it or not. I am that man. Okay, let's talk to the last one. Rajesh. Rajesh. I've spent enough time on a squad. Right now, I'm the most qualified candidate for sergeant you have. Okay, questions. What about the slums? To fix them, or to protect my political interests? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Both? Well, you know what? That's up to you. What would you do? i do more or less what VJ is doing. I'd put other people in charge of no-win situations and let them take the blame when things don't work out. Frankly, there's not a lot that could be done for the slums right now. My primary goal would be to survive until there was. Okay. I definitely don't want the first dude I talk to. He is... He's not the person I want. He's basically the hothead. Basically, he's the hothead. Rajesh is the sort of midpoint. And then the other guy, whose name I forgot, actually, even though I just talked to him, is the, uh... He's the, the cool one. The more common collected. So we have the extremist, we have the moderate, and then we have kind of the extremist on the other end, I suppose. The extreme... Extreme non-extreme, if that makes any sense. Okay, your first duty. Follow orders successfully. Of course. If you could fix the city by killing me, would you? Give me a moment to think it over. Yes. Okay. Take me through your reasoning. I thought about whether I could kill you or not, and decided that wasn't really part of your question. I decided that if the city was were stable enough, it wouldn't need a man like you, and that the benefits of not needing you vastly outweighed the consequences of losing you. Finally, I decided that I wouldn't be punished for answering honestly. <laughs> okay. I think I know enough. I'll think about it. 
Alright, Sanjay's a douchebag. Bupendra is a good person. And his plans for the slums actually might work. His plans are very fair and could do very well for the slums in the long term, but I think my concern is that would he even be able to survive long enough to institute those plans? He might be too... too hands-off. He, he might be too nice. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna go with Bupendra. Let's hope I can save the slums. Thank you, sir. You won't regret this. <laughs> My soldiers might hate me now. Jailer. We've got two groups of prisoners, sir. Some Naga we found over a pile of dead humans, and a couple slum gangers who beat up a priest. <laughs> Jesus. Just uh, people who surrendered near the defensive line. We'd have to leave men behind to guard them. It'd be better if you could make the decision to execute them or let them go. Oh god, right now? Can we not just, like, tie them up or something? So then we don't have to look over them? Hmm. I really don't see why we have to leave some people behind. There's got to be a way just to tie them up. Although, how do you tie up a Naga? I don't think handcuffs would work. Hmm. <laughs> I'll look him over. The Naga regards you silently. Either it cannot, or will not respond. Kill us, or don't. Either way, the Queen is coming for you. Your days are numbered. He had it coming, believe me, he had it coming. The priest was selling bread to the black market. Medicine, too. We were sick of it. Ah. Oh, that was a common practice. Well, what's that guy's name? The, the priest that was talking about how he did sell all the stuff to the black market so that he didn't have to put himself in danger to give it to people? I wonder if that was him that died. What about the assassin? Cheyenne. Nice to see a familiar face. Maybe not so much yours. Is that? Sir, the men are saying he's the one who... Hmm. Jesus Christ, what do I do with him? the hell do I do with him? <laughs> do I want to just put it off? I actually do want to put it off. I really, really do. I have a feeling whether I leave him alive or not is going to change what happens with Asha and the insurgency. Hmm. I'm gonna talk with him. Leave us. No offense, but I kind of hoped I'd never have to see you again. Especially since Vijay ordered his men to kill me right after I... you know. Hmm... What, what, what's even the point of talking to him? Like, what information could possibly change my action? What could he possibly tell me? 
I'll be honest, there's a lot about that day I don't understand. Yeah, probably VJ was the only man with all the answers, and we knew that, and we killed a group of innocent people, because he said it would make Behemra better. You know, I don't know about you, but I'd like to go to my death knowing a little bit more about the worst thing I've ever done. Hmm. Okay, let's trade. I'll ask a question, you ask a question. Alright, your go. Who else knew? Did Ranvir? Laxmi? I don't know about Ranvir, but Laxmi did, and she either knew or figured out that Jadeep would try to kill me afterwards. Her men grabbed me right after the assassination. She's been having me rat out traitors on her farms. Believe me, it hasn't been fun. Okay, so... He was an asset to her, so Laxmi tried to protect, protect him from being killed after the assassination. So that he could stay an asset, okay? So, why did you let it happen? What did VJ tell you? So, I could play just the I'm a mercenary card. You know, I'm a mercenary, I go where the money goes. I feel like... There's a good quote from Game of Thrones that could be used here. But I can't remember and I can't think of it. Something, there's, got, there's a lot of good quotes about mercenaries and going where the coin is from Game of Thrones, but I can't remember any good ones right now. Insert something clever. There we go. Um, okay. I honestly don't know what I want to go with here. Hmm. He said the royals had it coming. The Naga were their fault, and the slums were their fault. They deserved it. And you bought it. Huh. Well, to be fair, so did I. Your turn. When did Vijay start planning the assassination? He only told me the day before. I don't even know. He didn't give me much notice either. I worked for him for a while, and he sprang it on me at the last minute. I guess the idea was if he didn't tell his allies, they wouldn't have... If he didn't tell his allies, they wouldn't have time to panic or betray him or second-guess things. But he definitely wanted us involved. I know that much. It meant we were complicit. It meant we'd stay loyal. Do you regret, you know, that you're a part of it? That we killed them? Yeah. I don't like the people who've taken control since. That's fair. Some days I feel the exact same way. Then, other days... Other days I don't know. Your turn. What are you doing here? Honestly? What really keeps me up at night is worrying that I killed the king and queen for no good reason. That the peace we'd won was temporary, and Behemra would collapse anyway. I guess when I heard the riots were spreading, I had to... see for myself. Here's a nasty question. Do you think we're gonna make it out of this? Behemra, I mean. I think plenty won't, but... The city will keep standing. Best we can ask for. Yeah. Your turn. What was your incentive? Was he paying you? I was paid. But honestly, I just wanted the riots to stop. 
Vijay made me believe that I, and only I, could restore some peace to the city. Wouldn't you bend your moral standards a little? Hmm. No, I wouldn't. At least certainly not on VJ say so. So what's your goal been lately? Lately? Try to help people who can't help themselves. Your turn. Why did VJ pick you? Why not anyone else? Well, thanks to him, I was the court spy. It meant I was close enough to attack them on the day. But, just in case things went wrong, he had deniability. That's my guess, anyway. Maybe he just didn't want to get this uh, to get his hands dirty. If you could wish death on one person right now, who would it be? Honestly, the, the only one I think I actually really want to genuinely kill is Laxmi. But that's not even an option, so I'm just gonna say I don't know. I think there's enough killing going on already. Is there? Then what's that sword for? Pointing out areas needing civic improvements? I hate to say this more than anybody, but the reality is... There's no way out of this tunnel but killing people. You can kill some to save others, or save some and let the rest get killed. Or kill everyone and save yourself. But at the end of the day... Someone's dead who maybe shouldn't be. That's what I left the city to avoid. That's why I'm stupid for coming back. Your turn. That's it. Of course, all of this is ultimately pointless. We're only ever going to have a couple different perspectives on this whole mess, and you really have to understand every side of it to fix it. That's why VJ was always going to end up ruling this place. Yeah, I'm not totally convinced that Vijay really runs much of anything. Laxmi controls the farms, Ranveer controls the slums, I control the muscle. And all of you are on the council because you run those things just the way Vijay likes it. Laxmi's a stern taskmistress, so he gives her all the farms to police. Ranveer keeps the slums peaceful right up until he stabs them straight down the Naga's throats. Which is exactly what Vijay wants to happen. Rhea's a coward and a pacifist and unwilling to start a war with Behemra. And you. Honestly, I don't know about you. And I'm pretty sure that if you start causing trouble, VJ will find a way to give you the boot. He can try. He can try. Let's get to the point. You have a lot of priorities right now, and by nobody's estimation am I one of them. I'm harmless. I've performed enough assassinations for one lifetime, and I frankly approve of VJ being in power even though he tried to have me killed. So please, just let me go, so I can get out of this city for good. Hmm. No. No. Sorry, but I need you as a bargaining chip against VJ. You can wait in chains. Yeah, somehow I knew that was coming. Alright, what should we do with the prisoners, sir? Well, I don't... <laughs> hold on, I don't want to execute them, and I also don't want to let them go. I just want to hold them for now. Well, okay, the humans killed a priest, right? Who was selling medicine and stuff to the black market. I'm, I'm gonna let them go. I'm gonna let the humans go. What about the Naga? Hold on, what, what did the Naga do again? I actually don't remember. Weren't they just found over human bodies and that's it? So we don't even know if they actually killed anyone?
I, ca I can't talk to them, can I? Not really. Hmm. I'm definitely gonna let the humans go. The question is, what do I do with the Naga? And given that the Naga, like at least one of them is saying, your days are numbered, I'm kind of worried they're gonna be let go and then just try to murder me. Okay, um, just let them both go. Less to worry about. As you say, sir.